Hello and welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus. Welcome to Let's Talk About Jesus. I'm on this program today with uh, Minister Timothy Oikweme, uh, popularly known as Timothy, the man behind the music. Uh, before we go further, Mr. Uh, Minister Timothy, I just want to say thank you for, for coming on this program. Let's talk about Jesus. Uh, I want to welcome you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time. We really appreciate it, and we do not take it for granted. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, sir. Uh, I am very humbled to be a part of uh, of this. This is uh, quite humbling. So thank you. All right, great. Um, to all our viewers, this is Let's Talk About Jesus, where we discuss issues and challenges of life, and we provide solution from the Word of God, the Bible. And so if you have not been listening to us, please go to the YouTube and go there, listen to us at Let's Talk About Jesus. Uh, also, we are all on uh, podcast too, so you can get it on podcast wherever you get your podcast from, be it Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, Spotify, uh, and so on. You can get this program on there. If you would like to, you can send us email at my few talks about Jesus. You can email us at my few talk about Jesus at gmail.com. All right, Mr. and Brother and Minister Timothy Kohikweme, thank you, sir, again for being here. And uh, like I just said, we discuss issues and challenges of life on this program. And uh, probably, uh, the viewer might want to ask, you know, what is the issue about music? What is the challenges about music? Well, I may not be in good uh, states to answer those questions, but uh, the issue uh, might be from my own view on how we have different kinds of songs nowadays being composed compared to those of old. And when you know or when you understand the impact music can make in the life of people, then you will know that in the kingdom, I mean in Christendom, uh, we have to take extra caution when we are preparing or making music for others to hear. So therefore, our focus for today is when worship becomes a lifestyle. When worship becomes a lifestyle. And so I will be asking uh, Minister Tim, a couple of questions today on this program. And uh, in contemporary music, uh, there seems to be a difference in how uh, we worship God through songs when compared to those of old. And by that, I mean when you look at the lyrics, when you look at the words in those songs. And so it appears that uh, people pay more attention nowadays, people pay more attention to instruments and of course instead of the lyrics uh might not be every time but i'm very sure there are people who does pay attention to the instrument so we now in this era we have instruments and technologies uh that people of old didn't have uh but before we actually go into my question minister tim why don't you tell our viewers or those that are listening to us who exactly is Tim? Uh, wow, that is such a loaded question. Uh, it might be put very simply, but it's really not. So who who is who am I? I can only answer that by saying that I identify myself through the lens of of my maker. Uh, God. So he has put in me my that's my identity. That's uh, I'm created in the likeness of God. So who am I? Uh, and 
um, that that would be my identity right now in this phase of my life. I've come to uh, understand that is one of my main purposes to worship God, to, you know, to pretty much have that mindset of not just existing, but understanding my purpose, understanding my place on this uh, on this earth. So I would say I am in the image of, of Christ, of God. That's, that's who I am right now. <laughs> I could take an hour answering that. All right, cool. Thank you, thank you so much, um, the worshiper. And uh, yes, I did need a worshiper to come on. Let's talk about Jesus to give us the answers to my questions, and also to everyone watching us. Uh, if you want to ask Minister Tim any question about worship, feel free to send in your chat and we will address your questions and i just want to thank everyone that are watching us on facebook and on youtube thank you for your support thank you for watching us we really appreciate it and so my question to you minister team what is your definition of worship um worship First of all, the definition of worship uh, is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration specifically for God. It, it is meant for God. So it is the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for God. God only. And I would say worship is a posture. Worship is a lifestyle. I'm gonna I'm gonna end that there right now because it is that's there's a there, there can be so much to say about what worship is. So but just put it in simple. Um, worship is a posture and it's a lifestyle as well. Thank you, sir. Worship is a posture and it's a lifestyle. Mm. Wow. Thank you. So my next question, of course, then is uh, if I say worship is more than music, it's more than just singing, uh, it, it, do you agree with that statement? And if you do, I would like if you can describe to us what worship looked like and why is it more than just music? Yes, I I, I definitely agree with that uh, with that statement. Um, worship is definitely more than music. Like I said in the definition, worship is a posture and. They can, and it has to be also a, a lifestyle. So worship is also a lifestyle. That means that there's no time in the day that you're not worshiping or that you're not in the posture of worship. So you cannot carry music everywhere you go. You cannot play music at every every specific time. You cannot, you can't sing every time. So when I say it's a posture is is a position of your heart. So God is not, you know, uh, a sister gave a sermon the other day in church and she said, God is not someone that is PRN as needed. God is someone that always has to be in our subconscious and our conscious. So it means that every single day we have to walk in um, in the in the knowledge that everything we're doing is for God, so that now begs the posture to be taken every single time. So it is definitely more than music. Music is a tool of expression; is one of the tools of expression. 
a lifestyle is um you know a lifestyle is a a a uh, a permanent status of the posture we take when it comes to doing worship properly so um it is definitely more than music music is just a tool of, of expression is a tool of of what we use to express how we feel about god and who god is wow that's really powerful uh our posture all day should be in worship mode in worship status and music is just a tool when it comes to uh worship because music is a tool of expression wow thank you so much sir we really appreciate that all right so i would like to ask you what qualities do you think a worship or music minister will need to minister effectively so for example uh, if one is looking for a job in this day and age uh the the employer is looking for certain qualities and so when they go through the resume uh, they are looking for something when they meet you in person they are looking for something and what they are looking for are the qualities you have to successfully carry out your duties and responsibility on that job so when it comes to music and, and to every viewers uh, i want you to see these in that when we are talking about quality so we are not necessarily saying for you to approach god these are the things these are the qualities you have to have to approach god but now we are talking about someone who is positioned to be in the in charge of music of leading people in worship okay so uh minister tim what qualities do you think a worship leader must possess in order to effectively do the job um i would i would definitely say that humility is 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 very important um you cannot approach god in pride you have you cannot approach god from a position of oh you know i know all of him so humility has to be one of those things there are there are so many things on, on earth that we see that is on a grand scale that we that we're like that we pretty much that humbles us like oh my god this is so amazing i am just dumbfounded and humbled that something like this exists talkless of talkless of god i don't there's I, I don't see anybody that can walk into his presence with pride it, it he's the the his presence alone you know you know brings about um trembling so the first thing you have to do is approach god with humility uh another quality that anyone needs to have is the um the desire to to know god you god says he said in, in john 4 verses 24 that he is seeking he said god is spirit but when god is spirit and those who, are, who worship him must worship him in spirit and the truth and we are all familiar with that scripture but you have to understand that it says number one god is spirit then you have to have someone that has the understanding of of how to approach god that god is spirit he is spirit so you have to have someone that that wants to learn and wants to know who god is um those are one of the qualities that we are looking for in a in a worship in a you know worship you know minister someone that takes the time out to seek god for himself to you know to be to have the one-on-one -on -one relationship with god uh and a perfect example of that is david in the bible and for god to describe david as a man after god's own heart own heart speaks speaks of the quality uh, or, or, or the character of David. David was somebody that always, always sought after God. We all, most of the um, most of the, the the Psalms were written by God. Were, uh, sorry, written by by David. And like he's he doesn't stop. So we need somebody that is relentless 
relentlessly in pursuit after God. So, you know, that is, you know, the two of the qualities I'm going to just speak about. Humility and someone that, you know, is relentlessly in pursuit to know God. Hmm. Someone who doesn't give up easily. Someone who doesn't bow because of uh, certain issues or challenges of life. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, humility, of course, very, very key into this when one is to be a music minister. And of course, humility applies actually to every areas of our life. So whatever we want to do in our dealing with people and whatever we chose to do, humility is very key. So you basically gives us the key to life right there, which is humility. You know, humility can hand us uh, a lot of a lot of things that we are likely not going to get. Thank you. All right. So my next question to you. Uh, so, uh, of course, um, it is good to be in communion with God every time. I, and I think a lot of people will probably agree with that. And then the reality of life is that uh, uh, some of us are not in that state of mind every time, you know, just to constantly be in communion with God, whether you are worshiping Him, whether you are uh, you are praying or praying in tongue, or you are in that mood, you are in that connection with Him every time. So for some of us, uh, that is not the case. And so the worship uh, team, when we come together, uh, the worship team, they have that privilege of facilitate our worship. Uh, and then in many cases, some people have unforgettable experience, you know, and some for years to come, they remember a particular song at a particular time. Uh, mm -hmm. So my question to you is that in our individual or personal life, how can worship help harmonize our relationship with God. Uh, first of all, this the second part of that. Uh, <laughs> this this the 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 second part of uh, that John four uh, verse twenty four, uh, where God says the hour is coming and and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in truth, in spirit and the truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. See a lot of. A lot of times we are let me backtrack a little bit man has this inherent desire to find God that is that is uh, that is almost our, uh, our our natural state that's something that we do we have this desire to seek God to find God and some people do it right and some people do it wrong that's why you have idols and all that stuff there's the desire to seek god to seek a higher power to seek something that is beyond us um we christians we seek god every day we have sessions of prayer every day we have sessions of of you know times where we see god we have you know, prayer. We have prayer, uh, prayer points. You know, from from here to to you know to whatever. A lot of prayer points. And the distinction in in John four is that God is seeking. That's one of the time. That's one of the places in the Bible where I see that God is actually looking for somebody. God is looking for somebody. He's looking for. And who are the specific people he's looking for? God is looking for those who we worship him in spirit and in truth those two criterias right there makes anyone a candidate for god to find them we know that there's nothing impossible for god so god will always be looking for somebody and if you happen to be a candidate of someone that you know worship him in spirit and in truth then god has found you already um in our individual lives how can we come into a place where our relationship is harmonized with God? Well, the first thing you have to do 
is to make yourself available. You have to make yourself available. You have to know who you're looking for because uh, <laughs> we have our priorities misplaced these days. So with worship, worship allows us to set aside that time, to set aside that, that, that space and time to focus our attention. Now we know, we, we all hear the saying that God inhabits the praises of his people. Truly is the, the incense of our worship is pleasing unto him. And there's no way that you offer up something that pleasing and he doesn't respond. He's already looking for somebody. He's looking for those. And if if you, ha- if you happen to be one of the people that God is looking for, then you're a lucky man. There's nothing else that cannot be solved. There's no, you don't need any prayer point. You don't need any anything else. You don't, if God is looking for someone such as you, then everything about you is settled. You don't need to fight for anything. So for those that have not taken the time to pause and to find a, a time and a space to give God, to give God a, a, a moment of, of just communing with him. And worship is one of those things that allow us to do that. And even if it has to be with song or even it have, have to, happens to be um just you know even silence or whatever it is just that that consciousness just just you know separate yourself and just give god that time that one-on-one and he will find you wow that is powerful uh in the sense that many a times we are looking for what has not gotten lost uh many a times we we turn simple thing to rugged science uh, when we are supposed to just fall in line with the scriptures, you know, making yourself available for the things of God, making yourself available. That is really, really wonderful. Thank you, Minister Tim. Uh, Well, this, this brings me to my next question, of course. And to all our viewers, thank you for continuing to watch. Um, So this brings me to my next question. uh, And that question is, do you think there is more focus? Like I said uh, in the beginning, we have things in these days and age where the people of hope doesn't have. So do you think there is more focus on tech, as uh, like the instruments, uh, instead of the lyrics, uh, in those songs that we are uh, that are being composed or that we are listening to now, because my belief is that in every service or in every moment that the children of God gathers together, every part of that gathering can brings deliverance, can brings breakthrough. It all depends on how we handle it and the level of our belief. Um, I shouldn't be waiting only to when prayer points are going on before I know that I can receive my healing when uh, the current says are ministry. But I have to pay attention to the lyrics. I have to understand that it's not about how good it sounds, but about the power in that uh, song. And so, uh, do you think we have we, we focus this more on instrument these days and age? I mean, if somebody, if I if I want to go to the studio now, I don't sing anything. But uh, if I if I were decided to go to the studio, you know, I, I have to think a lot about the instrument part because if people don't hear those sounds as they're supposed to, now this does not take away the fact that whatever we do. We have to do it with the high quality available, okay? But is something missing because now you can hear a whole song. You're gonna have to be looking for lyrics in order to really get catch it. Otherwise, you probably won't hear what they're saying. But you will hear those uh, instruments. Yes, sir. Um, I believe that the first step to um, t- 
into songwriting or even um, or even a delivery of, of music, the first step has to be the the lyrics and the inspiration behind it. Um, I believe that there are some instances where, in comparison, uh, I, I should say, between the the the, the timeless hymns uh, of old that are ageless, and then songs that are you know, so forgettable right now that, you know, maybe songs that are here less than three years and are gone. We have to understand that the first step has to be um, the, 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 the inspiration behind it. Now, just to, just to break it down a little further, there are different types of, of songs. Uh, there are inspirational songs, there are, um, there are supple- you know, uh, songs of, uh, of uh, adoration, songs of uh, uh, intercession, songs of so there are different types of of songs written. So we have to look at the, those different types, and then even in those different types of of lyrics or different types of songs, we have the different genre of music: the contemporary, the gospel, the the um, you know. Uh, the f- whatever fusion of, of what, whatever that you know the new stuff they're coming up with now and you know I believe that there, there is a disconnect between the inspiration of the song and then now the composition and then the delivery I believe that that's where um, that's where sometimes the issue is so can should we blame tech or you know uh, the instruments. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's just in the it, it, it's it's in the way that it is used. Um, there's sometimes that if you know a song might be might be beautiful, but then when it's uh, when it's delivered in a certain way, when it comes to instruments or shooting a video and stuff like that, it, it becomes distracting and it takes away from the originality of the music. There are some songs maybe that are just meant to be uh, maybe just a guitar and a voice, you know, and you would feel the power and the, and the authenticity and the originality and the inspiration of the song. But if you take that same song and you add a whole bunch of stuff to it in the studio and or you do it live in a certain way, then you, you've watered down the, 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 the you know the potent of the the potentness of the song it, it becomes watered down so i think the message now is that um i'm appealing to to producers to um to directors to um sound engineers in the studio and to artists as well um don't let your your music be watered down or don't let your don't don't deliver your music in such a way that you know it's it, it loses it the, the the power you know some a lot of songs from when it's composed to when it's you know recorded in the studio it just changes over time and it just loses its power so whereby you have hymns of old the ageless hymns that were composed and that is that's how we sing them in the original form. That's how we we, we get to you know to, to that's how we we have access to the, the original stuff and the and the potentness and the, the the power you know in its original form. You know, so sometimes instruments and tech and all this stuff can you know can be a distraction or can if, if it's not used in the right way. Remember that these are tools that we use for worship. These are tools that. We used to express how we feel so we have to properly express ourselves if i'm talking to you now and i'm not using the the english language in a proper way then no one is going to be able to understand me or no one is going to be able to like get exactly what i'm trying to say or communicate so communication in its original form you know is is good it's it's something that everybody can digest and, and and appreciate but if you start to like mess around with a whole lot of stuff and you have no understanding of, of what to do especially when it comes to music mixing mastering engineering and all this stuff 